Hello everybody. Thank you for having me. I'm very pleased to see so many people so late on the first step of DrupalCon. You know, I know everybody are impatient to go ahead with uh, the social uh, uh, events. I hope so that everybody hear me well. Sometimes I speak a little bit too loud. So today's topic is uh, layout builder ecosystem, the agenda today, a few words about me. Uh, then I'm, I'm gonna talk about, uh, just to give you some background about why this presentation is called volume two. What about is uh, volume one? Uh, then I will, I will talk about, uh, uh, you know, the layout builder uh, ecosystem today, right? And then uh, I hope so we, we, we will have time for uh, question and uh, answers. First thing uh, about me, I'm, Drupal, I'm doing Drupal uh, since 2007, since Drupal, even it was like a five and six uh, back then. Um, I live in Strasbourg in the last five years, uh, but I'm originally from uh, Bulgaria. I'm very happy to see uh, Drupal come back in France. I'm, I'm super pleased as well. Uh, I love to speak about Drupal, about, uh, I really love to speak about cloud computing and generally about all type of open source uh, activities. Uh, yeah, my name is Boyan, of course. Yeah, you, you, you can uh, uh, all read it. I'm leading team from Solution Architects uh, within within uh, FFW, and we are very passionate about uh, technologies. Uh, I'm coming from a Drupal FFW. If somebody has been on the previous session, maybe you know. But uh, what uh, Tony didn't say, I mean, FFW stands for Friends from Work, which is actually very close to the Drupal community, and actually, I think this is one of the reasons of why. FFW and Drupal are working so well because we really rely on each other. Uh, you know, the previous speaker, he is working in the company like 12 years. I mean, I have started pretty much with him. So, you know, it's, a, it's, it's great to see, you know, careers within the same company because, yeah, I mean, because the, the community matters. Uh, anyway, so about the uh, volume one uh, ecosystem, in fact, uh, in the beginning of, uh, at the end of 2019, it was DrupalCon Amsterdam, I had a session on the topic. Uh, for the one that you don't remember, this is the year when uh, Layout uh, Builder went to stable within Drupal Core in the beginning of uh, 2019. Back then, the ecosystem of modules, you know, these are modules which are claimed that, or they are not just claiming, but they are working with Layout Builder, was around 16, right? Very few. Uh, you know, the layout builder still was uh, the new kid on the block. Uh, you know, people were experimenting a little bit with him. What changed until 2023? Uh, apparently, I have done many projects, you know, uh, and uh, many projects using layout builder. So I gather some experience and uh, on the next slides, I'm gonna share what I have uh, 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 gathered. Uh, but the figure that I wanted to highlight, today the ecosystem is more than 100, uh, more than 100 modules, you know. This is a massive, uh, this shows one thing, you know, uh, that what Dries uh, said today, uh, helping the builders, you know, to build websites easily, it's an important topic and it matters for the Drupal community and we, and, and we have to keep working, you know, of, of uh, improving uh, this uh, ecosystem code like a page builder or layout builder, doesn't really matter, but that's a, that's a features that are needed within the Drupal world. Uh, moving forward to uh, what is Layout Builder today, uh, I'm going to repeat some of the modules because uh, apparently the first module, this is a module that I have been talking uh, back in, 20, uh, in uh, 2019. Uh, in fact, this module, uh, Layout Builder mo uh, model, this is a module which is replacing the standard out of the box uh, canvas, uh, yeah, um, content editorial form uh, with, a, with a form within, within a model. Uh, the thing is that this module and similar modules, right, because there are similar modules which are uh, achieving the same task, there are more than 30,000 of usages, you know. This means that it's a massive usage, you know. Uh, from what I have seen, there is no a layout, uh, there is no a website which is using a layout builder facing editors, right, and there is no such of a module enabled, right. Uh, this is a message and, the, you know, there is a, a discussion in the issue queues that uh, obviously the the default solution has to be improved, you know, uh, and maybe this kind of a contrib solution could be one of the uh, options because it, it, is, it is really handy. What I usually uh, recommend to, to our dev teams to, to, uh, to do is to expand this model to feels more like an overlay, 
on top of the whole screen and not so much a, as a tiny box because on some screens looks quite ugly and you know not handy but you know this model to become an overlay and to take as much as possible uh, screen uh, so the editor has more space to work with the next topic uh, it's a it's a new module it's it's something quite where i'm quite exciting it, it is called it is called uh, section library uh, the idea of the section library is to help editors uh, and to improve the governance of the websites what i'm what I'm talking about. Uh, have you been in, in a situation using Cloud Builder, you're creating a very nice page, a template that you would like to reuse? And what you are doing, maybe there is a clone module that you can clone, but maybe it's not exactly the same because you don't want always to clone this type of content because you need to find the page that you want to clone. Uh, you know, now in Cloud Builder, there is a way that, you know, it is just like a, with a few buttons, you can see them uh, uh, on the screen, but you can save a particular section uh, from your layout, right? And to reuse it later on. So this comes like a default content uh, of multiple blocks that are configured to work together. So you can think about sliders, very complex related content views and all this can be working together. On top of it, it just gets better because there is a, a template uh, library as well. So you have the section within the layout builder, but then you can save a whole page as a template, you know? Uh, and in this way, you can really uh, put kind of a governance of what type of templates to be used, right? Because uh, you don't want, you know, everybody to be wild. You want to give some kind of a guidance of how the things to be used because, uh, yeah, layout builder is great, but when you start from an, from a, from a, from a, from, from an empty canvas, it's not so easy, right? So this module, it, it, it is extremely helpful. Uh, the next modules that I will talk about, actually, there is a Gene Layout Builder, Layout Builder Admin Team, there is a Quaro Layout Builder, you know, there is a few, but the idea is the following. The current Layout Builder uh, module, it's not fitting very well when you have a, like a front-end team, right? And uh, this type of modules, they are trying, to, you know, to rewrite some of the some of the classes, you know, to put extra classes so there is no co conflict between the CSS for the front team and the CSS with the admin team. Yeah, uh, once again, these are modules are used in, in terms of thousands, obviously something very useful, something that maybe should be considered to go within core. Um, yeah, moving forward, uh, layout builder styles, very simple module, but extremely useful. Uh, I guess with one that are using paragraphs, uh, sorry, uh, quasi paragraphs, you know, uh, this is something very similar. Uh, the idea is that uh, each of the uh, sections or blocks, uh, you can, uh, you know, apply some classes, uh, you know, so based on these classes, you can apply some extra styles. So you have, have like extra margin, non, no margin, you can have a different background, you can have like a rounded borders. And this is something that, uh, it looks very uh, easy for editor to work with, with all these uh, options. Uh, moving forward, uh, yeah, that's a good one. Once again, talking about uh, governance, uh, because Layout Builder, let's say for a, uh, small websites, it is nice because usually it's a one-site editor. The editor can do whatever uh, or he or she wants, everything, it is fine. But in the moment where uh, you create like a website factory, you have maybe like a 50 layouts, you have 100 blocks, you don't really want to be able to see all these blocks on every single content type, right? Uh, or every single layout. You want to see only the blocks that make sense within a particular, uh, you know, uh, within a particular layout, uh, within a particular uh, content types. Very often, you want to create also a layout where, uh, let's say, the heading section, uh, it is swapped. It could be a product page, for example. The product page, it is fixed. It, it always in the heading should be, uh, should look in the same way because this is how the governance and the design rules are. And everything else uh, below could be dynamic, right? And this is now, you know, possible with a uh, bunch of modules, layout builder restrictions, layout builder work. There is a few others. And you can really put a very good control of what is possible with the layout builder and what is not. Moving forward, uh, yeah, 
that's one of my favorite modules, uh, layout builder library uh, and the patch that uh, people from, from FFW have been working on. Actually the patch at some point become too big and now it's like deserve its own um, module and this is the recommendation from the maintainer. But uh, yeah, and this, is, and this should happen. But what layout builder library is doing? By default, the layout builder uh, library allows to the uh, site uh, administrators uh, or editors to create uh, many layouts which can be reused on a, uh, on a single content type. All these layouts can be predefined, their configuration, actually you can ship them between different environments, uh, you can keep them under control, let's say. Uh, and all these layouts are something that uh, the editor uh, by default has a drop down and they can choose which one, which layout to choose. Uh, once again, example with the product page, sometimes the, the, the product page is uh, very complicated with a lot of content and you want to put, uh, to use a certain layout. In the, in the other way, the, comp the product is uh, white of content and actually it makes sense to use another layout, right? So uh, yeah. This is great, but why we need to have the why we need to have this extra step of uh, for the editor of selecting a drop down, and this is where the patch is coming from. Uh, so the patch uh, allows you, based on uh, rules, uh, you know, like uh, based on the field attribute name, for example, uh, sorry, field attribute uh, uh, value. For example, if there is a category and you know that this product is one category, you can configure. Uh, you know the the um, uh, the layout to a certain layout to be used, and in and in the other situation, based on another category, you can activate uh, another layout. So everything becomes automatically. Uh, you don't uh, need to ask the editor to choose what is the best layout. You know, and this is usually the best. Uh, le yeah, less work for editor. Yeah, everybody uh, are more happy. Um, yeah, moving forward. Uh, yeah, this is one, once again, favorite model of mine, not so much about the community, you know, there is no so much usages of this module, maybe because the module is still not uh, stable, uh, which is a good reason to, yeah, but um, uh, what the module does, uh, the mini layout uh, for the one that they that have been using Drupal 7, this is like a uh, mini panels, uh, but really this module is think about that you can have uh, a layout, like a block with a layout that you can plug uh, within your layout template. Where this could become handy, um, first one, for example, I'm once again, product page. Uh, and this product page, uh, uh, today in Drupal 7 or later on, you might use a not queue for this task. So for follow me, uh, what I'm trying to, to, to um, explain, uh, you might want to have a section where, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the site editors to push a particular uh, banners, which are the same for all product pages. So, you know, something which is, which is global and this is section has to be changed globally. You know, I put this banner and this banner should be shown on all, uh, on, uh, on all product pages. So, uh, um, and uh, in fact, uh, this is something that with mini layout is very easy to achieve. You just configure the, min the mini layout as a block in a particular product layout template. And then uh, you, you have to exclude mini layout from the configuration, from the Drupal configuration. And then you can manage this as a piece of content. You can create a different uh, columns, rows. You, it is not just like a node queue where it's just like a one block after another block but it's really something very flexible where you can get wild if you need. Um, yeah, another use case that I have been using this in the last years is it is, to, it, it is to have a mini layout within the header and the footer. So I complete, we completely override the Drupal block system, right? For managing, uh, uh, you know, uh, components uh, within, the, within the header, like a menu, search box, uh, logo, et cetera, and we put it, uh, and we put mini layout. Why we did this? Uh, it's not because we have layouts, maybe just a little bit, uh, but uh, the main reason was really that we had a requirement, the editor uh, or the site administrator to be able to control what is shown within the header and the footer, right? And sometimes they want to create like a 
some extra menus within the footer because there is a different websites with uh, different needs. And you know, uh, having this mini, lay, uh, mini layout as a placeholder, which editor has control on, really uh, allow us to, to make this task. And um, in fact, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.